Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. In today's video, we're going to be talking about stamps and dies. This is the fifth installment of our Card Making Basics The Breakdown. Previously, we've covered cardstock, envelopes, inks, and tools. So let's begin covering today's topic. So let's start off talking about some deeply etched red rubber stamps. So first here I've got a wood mounted red rubber stamp. You can see that it's got the foam in behind it. So this gives us a nice impression when, when it's backed on a wood mounted block. What you'll find with red rubber stamps is that you get the best detail, the absolute most amount of detail that you could possibly get you'll find in a red rubber stamp. So I've got this one here, as I mentioned, it's a wood mounted stamp. And then we've also got cling stamps. This is a similar idea except you need to mount the stamp yourself. This is great for storage. It makes it easier for you to be able to store your stamps versus having a big wooden block. So this is where you would use a MISTI or a acrylic block. And so it's got the, the foam on it as well. And then what you do is you just stick it to an acrylic block or a stamping tool, stamp positioner, whatever you've got. And then you just use it just like that. So the only drawback that I find with the red rubber stamp versus a clear stamp is that you can't see exactly where your image is. It's best to be able to cut your stamps as close to the edge of the image as possible without damaging the image. So sometimes when you get your red rubber stamps, they come already laser cut and you just pop them out or you have to trim them a little bit yourself. So this one I started to trim and I was a little worried that I was going to damage the image so I just left it. Another type of red rubber stamp we have is a background stamp. Now, these typically have the backing on them. So there are a few ways that you can use these types of stamps. You can stick them to your work surface and apply your paper over top, or you can put them inside of a stamping tool. I'm gonna to stamp out some of these for you today so that you can get a good look at the detail that red rubber stamps provide. So we'll start with this big background stamp and I'm just gonna stick it to my work surface. And it doesn't go anywhere, so that's great. And then we're going to take some dye ink here. This is Gina K Designs Black Onyx Ink. And I'm just going to ink up my stamp to make sure I get good coverage. Now the only drawback with stamping it this way is you only get one shot. So if you're not too worried about it, the background, or if you don't mind a little bit of a distressed look, to be honest, I normally don't have a problem, but sometimes you might get a shallow spot or not so very well inked spot and you might want to re-stamp it. So this is where it's good to put them inside of your stamping tools such as the MISTI and I'll show you that in just a moment. So this is all inked up and we'll just take a piece of cardstock here and I'll lay it flat on top. Careful not to shift. So once it's on there, it's on there. And I take a piece of scratch paper and lay it over top of my image. Now, the trick to this is always making sure that one hand stays stationary. So I hold one hand with the cardstock in place and rub on one side of the cardstock to make sure I get a nice transfer. And then when I'm happy with that side, I hold this hand in place and don't wreck your paper. And then I press the other side. Now, this paper is being annoying. Let's do that. Get that out of my way. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Now I just use my craft pick because there's some ink there and I don't want to stick my fingers into there. There we go. So, nice detail in that. It's stamped very well. And we'll just clean this up. I usually just use water to clean my, my red rubber stamps. I've got a 
a spray bottle, and a rag. This is a microfiber cloth that I use and just clean up my stamp. So this is another way to mount these background stamps. I have a Misty here and you just take the foam pad out of the Misty and place your background stamp wherever you want it to be and then pick it up with the door of the Misty and then this way you can restamp it should you have the desire to do so. Okay, so let's move on to the other stamps. Just put this away really quick. Just a quick storage tip for these red rubber background stamps. I cut the top off of the packaging and I leave the manufacturer's label and slip a piece of white cardstock into the packaging just to give it a little bit of strength. And then I store the stamps in their pockets just like that. So this is the acrylic block mounted wing stamp. And we'll just ink this up. And when I'm happy with that, I'll stamp it down. And making sure you apply good even pressure. And there we go. This kind of detail that you see inside of this image, you can't get from a clear stamp or a photopolymer stamp. I mean, you do get nice detail, but this is next level. So we'll just set this aside and we'll do the wood mounted rubber stamp. So this one has got some even more over the top next level detail. That's why I chose this one because I wanted you to see how well these red rubber stamps really do give you that detail. So we'll ink this up and I like to lay them on their back because it, this one's fairly large. And I like to go over it multiple times to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Now there are tons of different inky techniques that you could do. You don't have to just stamp with black ink. You could do emboss resist. You could do, you know, rainbow watercolor, all different kinds of things. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just stamping with black ink. So we want to make sure we apply good even pressure. Now I always like to make sure that I press fairly hard in the middle only because I find that this is where I get my most shallow spots if you will so always make sure that I put some Hulk muscle into it yeah so to avoid sort of that it might be wise to put something better stamping platform underneath here we'll try this again I'll get my foam pad to my misty that might give us a better impression so I'll flip that over good thing there's two sides to every piece of cardstock so we'll re-ink this again so putting the craft foam down or the misty pad whatever you have will help you get an, a better impression it'll give us some bounce so let's try this again I have fairly weak hands so it's a little hard for me. I generally don't use these wood mounted stamps anymore because they, they take a lot of pressure and I just don't have the strength in my hands anymore. There we go. So check out the detail in that. There's a little barn back here and some trees and a road, clouds in the sky, rolling fields. Unreal. It is insane how much detail you get out of this. Crazy. Now, if I was any sort of artist, I'd love to color this in and make it look so gorgeous, but I can't color worth nothing. Okay, so let's move on to the next part of this video. Now, there are several different varieties of clear stamps that you're going to come across, and if you want a good stamped crisp image, you're looking for a high-quality photopolymer stamp. There are plenty of cheaper stamp sets on the market that are not high quality photopolymer and I've got some here that I'm going to show you um, just to show you the difference and what happens with those cheaper sort of uh, off-brand stamps now um, I've got some these ones here are Gina K designs Gina K designs has a high quality photopolymer stamp and so this one here I'm not quite sure the brand I've had this in my stash for forever this type of stamp is definitely not a high quality photopolymer stamp. 
it is some sort of latex or silicone or acrylic or something but I want to show you the difference between a uh, quality stamped image versus a not so great quality this is a Fiskars stamp set and again this is a name brand company that you would hope that you would be getting quality products from okay so let's start we're going to take this fairy and we're going to take we're going to use some solid images so that you get a good look at what I'm talking about here so we'll take the fairy and we'll take the dog and then we'll take one of the Gina K designs this is just the layered eucalyptus from Gina K but I'm just going to use one part of it just because we have a solid image there and we can compare so I'm going to set those aside and we'll start with an acrylic block and we're going to start with the Gina K designs stamp and we'll stamp with I have a few different brands of ink pads here too so that you can really get a grasp of what we're working with here now for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to use the foam insert from my Misty just because then we know that the surface isn't the problem if there is a problem I guess we have to determine that so I, I went ahead and I stamped all of those images. I just shut the camera off at this point because I think we'd be here all night with me jabbering away and stamping. Um, for the purpose of, of this video, we're just going to cut that out and get straight to the point. So for the Lawn Fawn and the Gina K Designs ink, I seem to get a nice smooth stamp out of it. And for the My Favorite Things Hybrid ink, I stamped it a couple of times actually. Um, with a few different colors as well and I seem to get similar results with all of them and I know that uh, this is definitely a high quality photopolymer stamp so I think the issue lies within the ink pad I think that these don't have a smoothing agent in them like the Gina K designs or lawn fawn so I could be wrong it could just be my ink pads they're fairly old so it's possible that they're they all need re-inking uh, but I did try with three different colors and got the same results so then the next uh, we've got the fairy and again I use the same inks for those and you'll notice that we get similar results with all three of those inks it's very splotchy it's not very smooth but the lawn fawn and the Gina K is a little bit smoother than the the my favorite things but for the most part it's very textured and as well with the dog let me see if I can let you take a good look at this I want you to see what I'm talking about here can you see that? The ink just sits right on top of the stamp. So when we stamp it down, we're not going to get the clearest impression. Okay, so that's it for the clear stamps for this part of the video. We're going to be talking about dyes. Now there are so many different varieties of dyes. There are shape dyes, word dyes, layering dyes, coordinating dyes, and I'm just going to talk about a couple of them here today. So starting with this layering set here, um, layering set means there are multiple sets of dyes, sorry, multiple dyes to one set that just stack so that you can create layering elements. So if you want to cut out a sentiment and then have a mat in behind it you can do that you can make fun cards and shapes with those so there are tons and tons of varieties of those okay then you have some shape dies these are a layering set of clouds this is the Simon says stamp cross very gorgeous so it has such ornate detail in it so 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 pretty and then we have word dies and I didn't take them apart, I didn't feel the need to, I left them together so that when I cut them I can just cut them out together. But there are little tabs that you can use wire snips to cut and remove that. Okay, and then we have coordinating dies. Now something new has recently come about. Um, there are a few companies I've seen make these, but this is my favorite. Um, Tailored Expressions has a set of simple strips. Now these simple strips have a whole bunch of sentiments in one stamp and they come along with these coordinating dies to cut them out. These are red rubber 
foam mounted foam cling stamps and they've got these little notches when you stamp it it will stamp out along with it and the notches are meant for the die to line up so you would take your stamped paper with your notches and line them up and it's going to cut out all of those sentiments into these lovely little bannered strips and so now the best part about this is that this die it works for all of the simple strips so I'm not sure how many there are I know I have four in my collection but um, all four of the stamps their different sentiments in each one coordinate with this same die so I really find the value in the money there when uh, you know these these dies can work together I think it's fantastic now there is also coordinating dies for your stamped images now this Alta New Lavender Bud, it just happens to be a two-step stamp and I'm going to show you how this works too. But So basically you're going to stamp out your image and then you have a die to cut it out. I'm going to grab some ink. I want some black ink here. Here we go. I've got some Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink. I'm going to ink up this stamp and I'll probably stamp it a few times just to make sure I get a nice impression. But let's see what it looks like after the first go. I'm going to apply some pressure to my misty door make sure I get a nice transfer of ink and I think I'll stamp it just one more time just to make sure it's nice and dark okay so I'm happy with that we'll just set this off to the side now here's where the magic happens we're gonna take this die and we're gonna line it up with those little squares on the end and make sure that we get them all centered evenly and I will just tape that into place here and I'm going to grab my plates. I have my Gemini off to the side of my screen here. So I'm going to put my die and my paper on my cutting plate and then I'm going to run this through my Gemini. I think this plate is just about done. Might be time to replace it soon. If your plates look like this on your Gemini, um, I'll leave a link in the description of the top of this video here to some quick tips that I have for um, the Gemini Junior and how I set up my plates and how I extend the life of them just in case you're interested about that so all these sentiments just fall right out that's so beautiful perfect okay all right so let's move on to the lavender bud from Altenew and I'll show you how to two-step stamp this and cut it out so that you get the even cut because this stamp is a two-step stamp, two -step stamp and you have to die cut it I suggest only stamping one of the parts so stamp one cut it out and then stamp the other or you can cut out the whole thing and stamp it but I find it's easiest when I stamp one piece let's say the top for example We'll take the top of the lavender bud and load it up on my block here. And I've got some Hero Arts Shadow Ink. This is a soft lilac. I think this is one of my most favorite colors of ink. Purple's my favorite color, but lilac, whew, I'm a sucker. Okay, let's stamp that. It looks like there was some ink left on here from the last time I used it. And I was uh, a naughty Nancy and I didn't wipe it off and I put it away dirty in case you hear any background noise of children crying um, I live in the basement of a very large home so a very big family lives above me so I hear them a lot I hear them walking and talking and babies crying and things like that all right so let's go back to the die cutting machine here we'll just cover up this ink pad and I'm going to take my lavender die and just put it over top of my lavender bud this is pretty easy to line up it's pretty forgiving too if you don't get it dead on okay so let's get that taped into place I always keep little bits of tape like, like to attach to the top of my die cutting machine just so I can grab it whenever I need it. I find it really handy. Okay, back to my die cutting machine. I'm going to use my cutting plates out. And now because it's so bubbly, I'm going to turn it the other way and use it that way. 
try to stretch the life of this plate just a little bit longer. Okay, here we go. Lavender bud cut out, success. Now, the next part of this, we're going to take the little stem part. Now, if you want, this is a little trick too to try to keep it straight. You can always use the negative piece of your stamped image and we'll just put the tape on the back just to create a little bit of stick when we stick that in. So we'll pop this die cut back into place and now we're going to we see right where it needs to go and it's held into place there. So now I've got some more Hero Art Shadow ink. This is uh, Antigua and then We'll just look into, look overhead and just kind of eyeball where it needs to be and stamp. And there you have it. Perfectly cute little lavender bud ready to go attach to your card projects. Okay, so that's about it for this video. Thanks so much for stopping by to spend a little bit of your time with me here today. Coming up on screen are a few videos that I think you may enjoy. I hope that you would consider clicking that subscribe button if you like the content here today. So thanks so much, have a lovely day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!